Coming up next, we are going to start configuring the tower, the strong back, back from the rocket. That happens in a little less than a minute. We just heard uh, from the SMD and NLM that the spacecraft is verified on internal power and things are looking good for the Europa Clipper spacecraft. We're also listening to the launch teams as they discuss the data coming in that they're looking at for the rocket. Teams continue to follow the procedure, as I said, and work uh, work the uh, loading of propellant, finishing up the topping of the three uh, boosters and the uh, second stage. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the three boosters are expendable fully. They will not be coming back uh, for landing today. Um, so uh, spacecraft, uh, SpaceX is getting the team ready uh, to launch this uh, vehicle today. And you just heard the call out that the strong back is retracting. That strong back appears to have retracted. So we're getting some discussion on the nets regarding the second stage. NY locks load is complete. As we just got completion of locks load for the Y booster. We're looking for now the center core and the plus Y. NLM, it's the LDM net with a final status check. ESLD, this is NLM on countdown one. NASA spacecraft and the NASA team is go for launch pending uh, resolution of the anomaly. Copy. Go pending out brief of the issue being discussed on the anomaly net. Affirmative. Okay, Tim. So they've mentioned that they're working in an anomaly. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. So as we mentioned, they're they're monitoring some temperatures on the second stage, and things are continue. The teams continue to look at that as they continue filling second stage with liquid oxygen. Um, they're continuing to look at that and monitor Center that core, uh, as far complete. as they can into the count. So things are continuing to progress forward with. Uh, locks load. Uh, center core is just finished up. So all three boosters are filled with locks and RP1. Second stage has RP1 on and we're getting near completion of our of stage two locks load as the team continues to look at that temperature uh, in the second stage. Uh, but we did hear NASA launch manager Tim Dunn tell Charlie Myers, stage SpaceX launch, launch director, that uh, they are go for launch uh, pending the resolution of this temperature issue. So the team has continued to work that. Um, and the team will continue to progress forward in their procedure. And so these these discussions are happening very quickly as we are counting down now inside the final two minutes until liftoff. Absolutely. And, and we just heard that stage two locks load was complete and the uh, team is uh, working that. And as you said there, this is what they do in the last few moments before launch. They're working their procedures, following their processes and having these discussions. But uh, we are still progressing forward towards a T0 of 12.06. And uh, things are uh, progressing forward for the launch this morning. Ground this gas afternoon. goes up. We are now 90 seconds until liftoff. Weather is 95% go. These boosters on the outside, they have flown before the Psyche mission a little more than a year ago. They are back on the pad along with a brand new center core booster and a spacecraft bound for the Jupiter moon Europa. And Daryl, I can confirm, listening to the teams, that up. everybody is a go for launch. They have resolved the temperature uh, issue they were looking at on second stage. Uh, everybody's given the go uh, for that, and uh, Falcon is in startup, so the flight computer has taken over. And we're getting SpaceX ready for the launch final director goal. is go for launch. And there we hear Charlie Meyer say that SpaceX is ready for launch and uh, Europa Clipper getting ready to lift off. And there's a great update as now it vents out 
the locks inside the line of the transporter erector. We are inside of 30 seconds. 30 seconds and counting. You must 15 seconds and counting. And here we go. 10, Ten. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper. Unveiling the mysteries of an enormous ocean lurking beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon Europa. Engine chamber pressures are nominal. See that the chamber pressures are nominal as we hear all 27 Berlin engines look great. Rocket beginning to roll. Putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Coming up, they're going to back off those engines just a bit. Ready to head into max, max power speed. and telemetry nominal. Here, the power and telemetry on the vehicle are good. There, everything's looking uh, really Falcon well. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. They have uh, reduced power in the center core uh, to get through maximum max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle as we approach that. The two side boosters at full throttle. A beautiful shot there. Is our camera team. Max Q. Locking into the rocket on a clear blue sky. The view from the booster cam back down on Earth. And there we heard the call for Max Q. The vehicle is passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Uh, next thing up in about two minutes will be a booster engine cutoff where we see the two side booster engines, all 18, shut down and get ready for booster separation. But the vehicle is performing very well. Looking at all the telemetry that we have, uh, power and trajectory are nominal. We've been flying for just under two minutes so far. Everything looking good. These side boosters, once they do their job, they will be expended. If you're familiar with the Falcon Heavy, you know that they bring the boosters back on certain launches, but not on this one, because all of the performance is needed to push Europa Clipper into its proper orbit. Things continue to look good as the vehicle uh, heads down its uh, ascent phase here. All telemetry is looking very nominal for this flight this morning. Uh, Falcon Heavy is performing very well. Now we're just about 30 seconds away from separating those side boosters. Their engines will cut off first, then they will separate. MVAC is chilling. Starting to chill down that MVAC D engine in the second stage. And that's uh, where we need to get the engine uh, chilled to the proper temperatures before flowing uh, liquid oxygen and RP-1 into it. So uh, they're conditioning the engine to make sure things are ready for when it's ready to uh, start up. Stand by for booster separation. Booster engine cutoff. Side booster separation confirmed. And there they go. Those two boosters previously flown on Psyche. Uh, this will be their sixth flight. We thank you for their service this morning. They did a great job of getting Falcon Heavy and Europa Clipper on its way as the center core takes over and continues mission uh, down its ascent. Things are looking really good in the telemetry. Power and trajectory look nominal and uh, chamber pressures on the nine center core engines look really good. And just a little more at 20 seconds from now, we'll get the cutoff of the main engine on the center core booster that remains. Four seconds after that, we will separate. Flying out over the Atlantic Ocean. There's a look from inside. There we, we see go. stage one. Uh, stage separation down. confirmed. And stage separation from the uh, center core. Getting ready for MVAC startup, SES-1. We're getting some applause here in the Mission Directors Center, and there you see the MVAC-D engine lighting up. 
Next thing up in about 10 seconds will be fairing. NYPY FTS has saved. And fa the fairing has protected Europa Clipper on its ascent th up into space. But once we get into space, we don't need that fairing anymore. Uh, so there they go. Confirmed. Fairing has separated, and those will be recovered, Daryl, by uh, SpaceX's own recovery ship, Go over. Cosmos. And there um, you see them falling away into space. That is the only part of this rocket that will be recovered. The glow of the MVAC D engine as it uh, performs its uh, first burn here. This is about a um, three minute and 47 second burn. Uh, things are looking great. Uh, matter of fact, this is one of the shortest first burns that has been done on a Falcon Heavy uh, by SpaceX, but uh, it is required to get us into that parking orbit for that long coast that we have to get ready for the interplanetary trajectory that uh, we're gonna need to get Europa Clipper on its way that we heard Jenny talk about to get those earth assist uh, slingshots as it, it uh, heads on its way for its mission. So things looking really good this morning with the performance of the Falcon Heavy. MVAC is performing well and everything looks good thus far in the today's mission. Usually those burns are the other way around with the longer first burn and the shorter second burn. But in this case, it is reversed. As we look at some crystal clear views of the MVAC D engine, the stage two that's carrying Europa Clipper, orbital light is shining both on the spacecraft the second stage and on planet Earth. Center and core FPS has saved. There we've heard that the flight termination system on the center core has been saved as it heads back uh, to splash down. Things are looking good. I can tell you, Daryl, we had a beautiful weather day for launch. And as we're looking at MVAC flying in space with Europa Clipper, it is such a gorgeous view with Earth behind it. And uh, so we could not have had a better day for a mission launch today. No doubt about it, Mick. It was simply gorgeous. We had a hurricane a week ago, but after that pushed out, it brought us in its wake near perfect weather for launch. And now we're into space, dealing with the harsh conditions up there. Stage two FTS is safe. Uh, stage two has made its way into space far enough away for uh, us to be able to safe the flight termination system. From a safety perspective, we're about a minute away from second stage engine cutoff as we will see the MVAC D uh, shut down and get ready for a long coast, uh, getting Europa Clipper into that parking orbit and uh, on its way for the uh, next firing that we will have, the second stage uh, number two, to get it into that interplanetary tra uh, transfer orbit that we need to get Europa Clipper started. So things looking very well this morning. We're about 30 seconds from that stage engine cutoff, which we refer to as SECO-1. That's right, we'll get into that. Guidance. Get into that coast phase. These views brought to you, of course, by ground stations across the track that are pulling in the high resolution data from the cameras. Burn looking good, just a few seconds away from cutting off from that first burn. And there it goes. The first burn is complete. Yep, things look really well on the stage burn result. Apogee, Perigee, and everything for the mission looks really good. Engine performance, uh, very uh, well uh, performance by the second stage for this first burn. And uh, things continue to look good as we head into this uh, long coast for this parking orbit. It's a long coast, and we'll hit that uh, second burn. Roughly three minutes and 21 seconds long. This one was roughly three minutes and nine seconds. And Mick, you saw the data from nominal it. It looked pretty good. And there you go. There, confirmation. We're hearing, we're hearing confirmation that we have normal, nominal orbital insertion as we were looking at the telemetry here, Daryl, that things looked very good. Stage two, uh, stage one and stage two performed very well on that ascent flight. And uh, we'll continue to follow stage two to get ready for that second burn. And then, of course, what we're really looking forward to, Europa Clipper separation. It's going to be a beautiful moment. If the pictures are as clear as we've seen so far, we will see it in all of its glorious detail. All right. We will continue monitoring the coast phase of the second stage with Europa Clipper. And we will bring that to you. Of course, any updates that we have will 
check back in with you in a little bit. But uh, for now, let's send it back to the host desk with Megan and Jenny. Oh, wow. I mean, if you're just joining us, welcome live to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where we just saw a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket soar off the launch pad with the Europa Clipper spacecraft. I thought, <laughs> I'm surprised you're here in Compose, to tell you the truth. Yeah, you did a good job of keeping me upright watching the launch. <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling? How was it to see that and feel that too? I mean, that was honestly one of the loudest and most powerful rocket launches that I've personally felt here on the Cape. It was uh, very emotional <laughs> in a good way, right? Just kind of overwhelming with just the the awe of it and that that it's finally going up into space. And uh, just, I, I feel almost at a loss for words. <laughs> yeah, I know. She was like, I am sobbing. I am sobbing. I am sobbing. I mean, but everybody can understand that, right? I mean, and this is one of my favorite parts of, of being part of the broadcast because I do get to watch it with the with the co-host. And really, this is so much of your life it is. that you're seeing culminate in a rocket launch. It is. It's a it's a huge, again, it's almost indescribable, just the amount of time and effort and and all the people involved that that got us to here and and to witness that moment is just unlike anything I can describe. <laughs> and can you believe it? We are still very much at the beginning of this spacecraft's journey. It is headed for Jupiter's icy moon Europa, which scientists believe could be the best chance of finding the ingredients for life outside our planet. It will take the spacecraft five and a half years to travel the nearly two billion miles to Europa. This is a mission developed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California and Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Laboratory in Maryland. Now, Jenny, why does the team think that Europa is the best chance of finding those ingredients for life as we know it? Yeah, you know, on this planet, everywhere we find water, we find life. And so, you know, that we that we think that there's this massive ocean of water underneath the ice on Europa is just, how could you resist, you know? So we, we think that Europa has that water, that's one of the key ingredients for life, along with the chemistry and the energy and the time. It's been kind of simmering away for a long time. Sure. It's a great place to go explore. And how exciting would it be, right, if we could verify that there are the makings of life as we know it on Europa? 